You know, the more I dive down into the rabbit hole that is sound design, the crazier the stuff I come up with. I love sound design because it is one of those infinite games you can play that always results in something new. And lately I've been playing around with some fun new things that I think you can try. So whether it's reversing melodies or pitch tracking a vocal into a bass with a vocoder, here are seven different tips that you can use to make your music better and more interesting with sound processing. Let's go. Firstly, we've got reverse melodies. I've got this little techno example here with a little melody run at the end of this four bar phrase. Let's give it a listen, but I wanna spice it up. Sounds pretty nice. It's got a lot of space. It's a bit, uh, you know, unique sounding. It's not a normal sounding melody which is cool, but I think there's some cool kind of suck reverse processing we can do to this melody sound to make it just feel a bit more otherworldly and so it jumps out at you a bit more basically. So what I do is I reverse it. Now, how I've done this, I'll play the example I've done and prepared for you before and then I'll show you how we did it. Sounds really cool. See how it like sucks into the melody? So how we do this is we grab our original MIDI I'm gonna select it all here from the beginning to the last note and I'm going to hit reverse on my MIDI editor there. And what that's gonna do is reverse the rhythm and melodic order of the note. So it's basically playing the MIDI backwards, which is what we want. I'd recommend using a sound or something with a decent amount of reverb. Now this preset here, I've actually just put together for our subscribers, but I wanna offer it to you guys today for some interesting sounds. This is our next level leads pack. You can grab that below in the description with along with 21 other great sounds for unique, interesting melodies and leads. But what we're gonna do here is basically make sure there's enough reverb on the sound. Now, the macro on this sound that I've designed has a bit of reverb on it, but I'm just gonna crank that up a bit there. So there we go. What we're gonna do is duplicate this track and we're going to freeze this. Now, what we're doing here is basically creating a effect where the tail reverses into the original melody. So by now consolidating all this audio together and now reversing it, we're back to the original melody. Uh, and to just in reinforce this, I'm gonna select our original MIDI and reverse that back to the original order. Now, what's really, really cool is we could actually just mute the original one. I didn't do it on this version down here. Uh, I actually layered it up with this one. Just gives the main melody still some sort of body to it. And we can see how that sounds in context with our kick and rumble that we had before. Make sure it's aligned properly so we might need to move it a bit off. Sounds really trippy, right? And then what I've done on this other version, I've just add in some extra delay and reverb just to give the uh, reverse sound a bit of space the other way because it sounds a bit too dry for me. Now you can go as crazy or uh, subtle with this as you like. I kind of went for a bit more reverb, but I think um, with this version, I'm gonna make it a little drier because I kind of like that sudden drop off effect. Same with the delay. So there you go, reverse melodies, really cool hack to get these otherworldly melody sounds. Okay, so the second one is what I call a wet delay drift. Now, how you wanna do this is grab some sort of melody sound. I've just got a little kind of cheesy sounding melody here. Would work in hyper pop or some sort of cutesy genre of electronic music. Basically, I've got the sound as I like it, and then I'm gonna add on a delay. Now, unlike our normal delay, which I'll just add a default one to show you the difference, uh, we wanna actually make sure we're using a time sync delay rather than a beat synced one. This will allow us the flexibility to get this effect. We're gonna set it to basically minimum. We're gonna get the, set the feedback to zero so we only get one repeat. And we're gonna get set the dry wet so we're only hearing the delayed signal. Now, what we're gonna do also is make sure we just boost up the width of our delay response to max. It doesn't really make a difference between eight and nine. It's just good to do. And what we're gonna do now, I'm gonna actually delete this version, 
is we're going to play around with this delay time here. Now, what we do here when we have the full wet delay with one repeat, when we move the delay time and onset to the repitch mode in Ableton's delay at least, it gives it this really trippy kind of vibrato effect. If we hear that in action as I just twiddle this knob, kind of sounds like a tape. And you can make small movements to kind of add these little pitch instable moments, but you can also do these crazy movements to add that more tapish kind of effect, right? And what I like to do is actually add a bit of LFO from the modulation section on Ableton's delay here and crank it up to about 50% to add a bit of natural wobble to the sound. Now you might be thinking, why can't you just add a normal vibrato effect? Ableton has a vibrato now, which is all well and good, but the fun really comes in when you actually get a bit meticulous with the shorter kind of delay movements like this. You know, you could add a little, a little kind of shotgun effect and make it as subtle or intense, you know, as you like. Now, I tend to find that, uh, you know, smaller movements, again, are better. So anything I'm doing, I'm gonna try and like flatten out so it's kind of subtle. And we wanna make sure the delay isn't too long because that actually is going to delay the actual sound itself. So try to have it as close to one millisecond as possible is basically what I'm trying to say. And you can also take this one step further by using something like the Max for Live LFO, you know, instead of modulating it like that, you can map this to the delay. Make it a bit more subtle. And it allows you just to go beyond the default delay there. You could use like the random setting. Jitter. And this is how you get those really cool tape-like effects. So, okay, so tip three is literally insane. When I discovered this, I was like, I can't believe I haven't seen this before. It probably exists, but hey, I just hadn't seen it. So what you want to do is find a really nice vocal sound like the one I found here. Coming to the end of our time. A dry vocal works really well. I just pulled this one, I think, from Splice Pack. Can't remember which one. But something with a dry, clear melody to it, right? And then what you want to do is chuck some sort of vocoder on the sound. Now I've got one I've already loaded up here and I'm gonna show you what I've done. So let's go to our, and add a new vocoder. And instead of having the carrier as noise, which it is set to by default, we're gonna add pitch tracking. Now what this does is it takes the pitch of the original sound and it applies an oscillator instead. And as you can hear, sounds kind of cool, right? There's some cool effects going on here. It sounds like a saw wave. We can change it to a square wave, which is my preference. And there's a few changes I like to make to make this really cool. As I said, I like to turn it into bass. So I'm actually going to change this pitch control here and go down 24 semitones so that our original vocal range is now a bass range. I like to set the low to the minimum and the high to the max. So we get the full range. Same on our range down here on the actual bands. Uh, this is just for the what it's analyzing for the incoming pitch. I also like to set it to four bands. So we get less of a vocal sound and more of an actual bass sound. We're just wanting to use the pitch of the original vo vocal as our kind of basis of the pitch of the bass, right? <laughs> Sounding really cool there. Uh, I like to kind of bring up the level a bit sometimes. <laughs> If we need it, depth we can play around with to make it kind of a smoother bass sound. I like to bring it down. Foreman, I like to bring down to kind of give it a bit more of a deep tone. Nice. We can play around with the attack and release to shape the uh, movement of the bass too. I tend to kind of leave it as default though. Sounding good there. You can play around with the bandwidth, although I tend to leave it at 100. Sounding really good to me there. You can play around with these bands. And 
and then you've got your base. And this is a really fun place to start because then you can go and add any sort of post-processing, filtering, distortion, chorus, any sort of movement to the sound and turn it into a proper bass like so. And you can basically go nuts from there. The possibilities are endless with this technique. So if you're making cool bass lines and you want something a bit different to use, Try this technique, could work wonders. All right, next one is I, I actually stumbled across this one by accident, but it's really, really fun. And it doesn't even involve any particular processing unit. It's more just the process of audio manipulation, right? So I've actually got a few different sounds I wanna demonstrate this on. Firstly, I've got a piano sound, which is just this longer piano sample. And this trick does work with longer samples. You'll see why. lovely sound and so what we want to do is we actually want to turn on warping uh, set it to texture here so we want to use a texture warping mode and we're basically going to hit this negative two uh, symbol about you know three to four times uh, so we're kind of moving say an eight bar loop or a four bar loop into say a one to two bar loop uh, or maybe half a bar uh, we're basically consolidating the audio right into a shorter period of time and this grain size and flux control on the texture warping mode is going to determine which parts of the, the whole audio spectrum we're gonna pull from to create a new sound. Because this texture warping mode takes random grains and arranges them together. And because we're squishing the time the audio has to fit in, it's gonna basically pick random grains from the whole stretch of audio, the original stretch of audio, and create something new. So we can hear that here. Let me just go to the original full length one. And in this case, I've also reversed the sample, which gives me a cool effect and gone up five semitones. So we're gonna go one, we're gonna go two, four, eight. And I'm gonna turn this flux off so that removes any randomness. We're gonna just scroll through this grain size and hear how the different grain sizes react to the audio. And you can hear, depending on the grain size, it's picking different parts of the audio and kind of stretching them together, kind of like a, a mad scientist sewing parts of things together and creating some weird monster. I don't know if that analogy makes sense, but that's kind of how I like to think of it. You can also do this with vocals though, and vocals work really well with this technique because they've got such different characteristics depending on the word that's being said, depending on the melody that's being sung, and a whole host of other recording and sound processing factors. So what I've done is I've done the same thing. I've pitched up four semitones. I haven't reversed it this time. And I've just consolidated it into a smaller, uh, basically half bar time frame. And I'm just going through and choosing different grain sizes. Let's give a listen to the original first. There you go, and then we've turned it into this. There you go. You can really have endless possibilities with this technique. You can resample, try on different sounds, use different chops, use different pitch variations and kind of create a new pattern. It's really, really fun. You should try it. Okay, so this next one is a more subtle technique, but it's really great way to get more life out of your reverb. And it's simply to use a distorted reverb send. So you apply your reverb as you normally would. Uh, I've got a reverb but a send here using the Valhalla Vintage Verb, which is just a nice little patch here, 2.48 seconds, kind of a nice hallish room sound. Do you know? And let me just send my vocal to it, right? Do you know? Do you know? Sounds nice to add some reverb to this sound. It's dry, it needs, it's a vocal, it needs reverb. But what if we used 
overdrive or saturation or an amp on that reverb to give it a bit of color and a bit of grit. That's exactly what I'm talking about here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually bring down the scent in preparation for the fact that reverb plus distortion or overdrive equals loudness. So we don't need to drive it into this send a whole lot to get the effect once we enable it. I'm gonna use overdrive here. And let's just hear the, the effect by soloing the reverb. Okay, so we, we can hear that we're hearing that reverb pretty obviously. And we're just gonna drive up this overdrive until we hear the sound. And you can hear the texture of that reverb just gets a little bit of distortion on it, which is just a nice bit of grit to the sound. We can play around with the exact dynamics, controls, and dry wet, etc., to get more or less distortion. But whatever you want to do here, the point is just to use reverb plus some sort of distortion. Now you can do this before or after the reverb. I've done it after the reverb in this case, but we can also add it before and see how that sounds. In fact, that might actually sound even better because now we're getting the softness of the reverb being applied to the overdrive. So let's bring in our dry signal and see how this sounds. Do you know? Yeah, there we go. That's really just bringing life out of the reverb. So you can distort your sends and send them into reverb. Get this big life giving reverb sound. Let's go to the next tip. Tip six. This is an underrated Ableton device that I use all the time in sound design. It kind of slipped the radar a couple years when it came out, but Ableton released this, I think it was called Creative Extensions. Let me just check that. Yep, the Pitch Hack device, that's the one, is an insanely good, uh, like, you but unique pitching rhythmic device that you can get some really cool textures out of. So I've just got this, like, nice Tycho-ish sounding lead synth here. very dreamy, but what this pitch hack device does is it takes any incoming audio, slices it up into a rhythmic interval that you set by the rate here, and then pitches that slice up uh, and basically repeats at every rate. So it's like constantly taking a new chop of audio and layering it over the top in a rhythmic fashion. Now you can set it to be reversed in the sense that it's gonna reverse the incoming audio and you can set it to recycle, so new chops will go in and also be affected by another 12 semitones to get this kind of crystallizing effect. You can set some fine tuning and other variations and stuff like that just to give it a bit more analog or kind of warmth to the sound. And then you just set the dry wet as you like. Uh, I like to use plus 12 because it's obviously gonna sound great on anything. Uh, let's play around with it here and see what we get. Sounds really cool, right? It's like adding all these little grains. It's kind of like a rhythmic grain delay almost. And I really like playing around with this. I love using plus seven. You know, you can use other harmonic intervals, play around with faster rates, like. Down, you can do not reverse. The world is your oyster when it comes to this device. I love to add the plus 12 and do it before some reverb as well, because when you combine it with like shimmer or something like that, it's just gonna add up to make this really lush sounding reverb. Hear what I mean when I play it. Sounds lovely. Definitely recommend you grab this if you're an Ableton user. And lastly, I love to take a vocal sample and turn it into a synth, uh, which is, I mean, something you can do with any vocal, really. It's just about finding the right part of it, the right tone, and kind of shaping it in the right way. So I'm just going to search for a vocal sample. I haven't prepared anything here deliberately because I want to show you how easy this is to do. All right. You want something with a single note and a very clear tone. Let's play this on our keyboard.
we can go like that. Let's warp it as well. I'm going to use the texture. That's cool. Let's add some decay to make it more of a pluck. Add some attack. Release, make it kind of shortish. Add some looping. Uh, just so we kind of get like a effect that loops if necessary. Uh, make the loop length a little more like that. Maybe leave the length like that. Something like that could be cool. I do like that little bit of pitch variation, which is quite nice. You're going to get a bit of a click depending on the sound. Uh, but let's, let's go like that. Add a bit of reverb. See what we can do here. Let's add Pro R. Actually sounds really cool just with like the default 100% wet. Add a bit of dry. And we could add some nice kind of movement on the actual filter. We could make it into more of an underwater sound. Um, you know, we could add a bit of a pitch envelope if we wanted to. Whoa! That is freaking sick. I don't even know what I'm doing, but it's just kind of worked really cool. That's like some, some next level, like, on some trap beat, like some background effect. Uh, I think it's like the warping mode with the pitch envelope just makes it sound really cool. <laughs> the sound design rabbit hole, ladies and gentlemen. Um, yeah, this is that's really it. You can turn a vocal into a lead and add more processing, multi-band compression, whatever you want. Um, but that's really it guys and i appreciate you sticking around for the full seven tips again a few of the sounds that i used earlier in the track are from our next level leads pack so if you're really wanting to use some unique sounds uh for leads in your tracks make sure you grab those 21 serum presets below in the description and go nuts they're royalty free so you don't have to worry about copyright or anything like that and if you have enjoyed this video uh, it's also a great way to get more from the EDM Pro team. You'll get more video updates. You'll get on our email list and get a whole bunch of extra goodies um, being a subscriber. So grab the pack. I'll see you in the next one. Enjoy.